I've had instances where like I was treated more mature than I am. For example, I'm 14 years old and like all the other people in my class are 14 years old, but they'll expect more from me because like I'm taller and bigger than them. Hello! This is Stella Idomaka. This is Nana Park. And we are the local winners of the 2022 Research Core Talent Competition. In this video, we are going to talk about our research project the adultification of black girls and its implications for a multicultural community. We're going to talk about our research process and how we undertook this project, the multiple learnings from it, and most importantly, how it's going to benefit our selected NGO, Black Canadian Women in Action. You may be wondering, what is adultification bias? Wikipedia Dictionary defines adultification bias as a form of racial prejudice, where children of minority groups, particularly black children, are treated by adults as being more mature than they actually are. Actions committed by these children that are deemed to be normal for child development are more likely to be treated as opportunities for discipline. The clear example of this bias in action is when a black child is assumed to be more mature or older than their actual age. Hi, my name is Tessie. I'm a senior program coordinator at BCW in Action. And uh, we are a bilingual organization that supports black women and girls and uh, black families, families in the Western. So what we do for our girls programming uh, is mostly uh, mentorship, uh, leadership programs. Uh, we do um, heritage and culture, uh, supporting them in uh, just being recognizing where they're coming from and where they're going. So basically, this research is so important for us, again, as, a, as an organization that works with uh, black men and girls because we get to uh, to hear and to you know know what challenges black girls go through. So we are really excited for um, uh, the research part and uh, based on uh, follow up for the implementation. Located on the west end of the city. The Orange Hub is a center for nonprofit groups that offer programs and services in the arts, recreation, wellness, and learning. This building is owned by the city of Edmonton, and this is where our selected NGO, Black Canadian Women in Action, has their office in Edmonton, Alberta. So, I'm Jean, Jean Lehman, the CEO and the founder of BCW in Action. So, this research is very important for, for not only for the organization, but also for the community. Um, black women and black youth usually don't have resources. You know that no one can I mean since we started having this organization we were first focused on women then we have also uh, mom I mean mother coming and also girls asking us if we had the space so that they can meet and share and also see what is their challenge and what they can do what are also the success and what are solutions Mon ancienne école il y avait un règlement qui nous permettait d'avoir des cheveux ou tresses uh, naturels uh, je me souviens avoir vu mes mes amis blanches avec ils pouvaient avec des cheveux de différentes couleurs mais sans mais quand il s'agissait de nous nous n'avions droit mais une seule, une seule couleur uh, ma propre sœur est partie à l'école avec des cheveux violets et l'école lui lui envoyé à la maison et lui ont dit de de enlever ses cheveux parce que c'était contre le règlement de l'école a groundbreaking study by Georgetown Law Center on poverty and inequality found that adults believe that black girls need less nurturing, less protection, less support, and less comforting. Bringing home to Canada, as seen in the videos we just saw, black girls have also experienced this form of behavior, either being called out for wearing simple things such as leggings or having a different hair color, whereas their white counterparts don't experience this. Despite adultification being based partly on race, to date, limited quantitative research has assessed the existence of adultification for black girls, especially in Canada. However, these are some of the pertinent issues experienced by the black community. But to what extent has this had an impact on children's health, social and emotional well-being? Our research relied on a two-phase approach, including quantitative survey, 
and focus group discussions. We surveyed 400 Canadians using an online sample and asked them to complete a questionnaire about their beliefs about children's development in the 21st century. To obtain an independent evaluation of respondents' view, irrespective of ethnic or racial groups, each respondent randomly received a questionnaire asking them their perception of black girls or a questionnaire asking them their perception of white girls. The results of the survey showed that across all categories, respondents viewed black girls from as young as 0 to 9 years as being more adult-like than their white counterparts. Likewise, 53% of respondents shared the same sentiments for girls in the age 10 to 14 years. In school, I don't feel uh, comfortable to express myself because I'm being treated different because of my skin color. I'm perceived older than I actually am and I'm just 14. It feels... It like just mentally it doesn't feel right to be able to be treated like that just seeing how other people that they can easily go past punishment 11 percent of respondents perceive black girls aged zero to four years to be more independent than white girls which was rated seven percent the study by georgetown shared similar sentiments as data showed that black girls are raised to be independent or be go-getters to get what they want for themselves the significance of this result lies in the potential for adaptation to act as a contributing cause of the demonstrated harsher treatment of black girls when compared to white girls of the same age to summarize our findings, we will sum it up in this key point. Number one, black girls feel they have been stereotyped to act older than their age. People say you look or act older than you actually are and it kind of like, I don't know, for me it kind of hits because, you know, I'm told to act older. Like, I get it, I'm the oldest, I should have responsibilities, but there are some things that I could at least have a little help with. Number two. Black girls are held to a higher standard of behaviors than their white counterparts. The resultant effect of adultification also means that the black child gets the higher punishment. The black child will get penalized for what the white student gets away with. This is one time this black girl is funny. This white girl, the white girl is being racist, what are they? I don't know. This and at the end of the day, the black girl, she got expelled for it. The white girl, she was like, she got an in-school suspension for three days after she initiated. Number three, adult attempt to enforce traditional white norms of femininity on black girls. Many of the black girls we spoke to felt that there was a general expectation from people for them to be angry, sad, violent, or expect them to act extremely emotional. I feel like sometimes I have to like act white in front of some people so I don't feel you have to talk like this, you have to, I don't know, just talk like this, feel yeah, like that. I feel like, I feel like everyone is like expecting you to like be really emotional or like angry or aggressive. Number four, black girls don't feel safe to express themselves. Like I'm not angry or sad like if i'm sad about something i just don't look at we learned that gender stereotypes has a huge impact on adultification. Stereotypes commonly apply to black women and girls, such as certain jobs or activities are for women and certain things are for men. How do we begin to address this? What can BCW do in a general community as well to ensure that black girls don't keep experiencing adultification bias? Number one is through constant re-education. Number two is by promoting cultural diversity also to increase activity for black kids in school it is imperative to mention that access to data for the black community is limited which is one of the key learning points from this project children occupy a unique place in a society they are instrumental to the sustained growth of communities hence why many refer to children as the future leaders of tomorrow and future decision makers it is imperative that children grow and thrive in enabling environments with access to the needed nurturing and guidance as they grow. That is why this research is so important. It's able to highlight that many black girls aren't provided with a safe space and continuously need to feel supported and loved. Furthermore, this research will be able to provide many nonprofits such as BCW with new programs that will be able to highlight the needs of black girls across Canada. Most importantly, we are of the utmost belief that our research findings could lead to critical policy changes. Policies such as targeted training for teachers and educational authorities. Nana and I are immensely honored to have done this research for Black Canadian Women in Action, BCW.
We sincerely thank the organizers of the Research Got Talent Competition, SMR, Canadian Research Insights Council, and our sponsors, Logit, Maru, and Praxi, for their support to carry out this research in improving the lives of children.